Hello, welcome to this last video in this series on triple integrals. We had a few videos about triple integrals in Cartesian. We had a few videos about triple integrals in cylindrical. And now we're finishing up with um, an example with triple integrals in spherical. We had a couple of videos introducing it, a video about looking at a couple more examples. So this is it. This is the last one. You're given this integral which is supposed to be calculating the volume of the shape that's in green there. It's called a spherical cap. It's a sphere, but it's sliced at um, an altitude that is above the, the, the halfway point. And so it's a cap of a sphere, a spherical cap. We're not going to actually execute the integral. What we're looking for is setting up the bounds to see if we really understand how the bounds work with spherical. And so let's start with the theta bounds. What do you think theta is going to start at? Theta is going to start at zero. What do you think theta is going to go to? Well, theta is going to have all of zero to two pi. All right, great. What about rho? To get rho, you come radially outward from the origin. So we draw this and we see these two circles here representing the, the lower bound on rho and the upper bound on rho. The upper bound on rho is a sphere and that where a sphere where rho is a constant, that's rho equals 14, given in the problem there. The lower bound on rho, however, comes from the plane and that plane has a name or equation z equals seven. So to get the lower row, we're going to have to deal with converting the equation z equals 7 into an equation for row. So if z equals 7, what does that mean about row? Well, the connection between z and row is that z is row cosine phi. So row cosine phi should be 7. We're solving for row. We want the lower bound on row. We're going to have to divide by cosine phi. So we have to make sure we avoid phi being something that would make cosine phi equal to zero. We don't want to use pi over two. The, the highest phi won't be um, pi over two. There'll be something before pi over two. So it's okay. Go ahead and divide by cosine phi. And you'll end up with, looks a little strange. Let's make it a little better. What's the reciprocal of cosine phi? Secant phi. So seven secant phi is the lower bound on rho. That is the name of the plane in terms of rho and phi. All right, great. Lastly, we have to figure out what's going on with phi. So phi starts at zero, the positive z-axis, but then phi comes down and stops. Where does phi stop at? Phi stops at the intersection between the plane and the hemisphere or the uh, spherical cap sorry what's the phi for that so both these equations are true at the same time rho is equal to 14 and z is equal to 7 and so to figure out phi for that upper bound on phi we have to take that into account both rho is equal to 14 and z is equal to 7. The equation that involves those is the fact that z is rho cosine phi. So 14 cosine phi is equal to 7. So cosine phi is 7 over 14. It's a half. What angle gives you a half when plugged into cosine? It's going to be pi over 360 degrees. And so we're done. We now have the upper bound on phi we have all six bounds and if we wanted to we can go ahead and execute the integral but this question wasn't asking it so this is just an exercise in building up the bounds for a spherical triple integral for a non-standard question it's kind of difficult there but you made it through hopefully you understood if you need more work on these i have a workbook that has my midterm questions in it a hundred of them with full solutions Please think of that as like a solutions manual for my midterms. Um, you can get that from my, my website, calcoach.com. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. Please uh, like and subscribe, comment down below. And um, this ends the triple integral. 
uh, set of videos. There's about seven of them. Uh, next video set will be moving on, combining the two parts of multivariable calculus, combining vectors and vector functions with multivariable calculus. We're going to enter into vector calculus, starting with the next video set. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.